Hi guys, Cosplay Lane here. Um, this is going to be my third bunny suit I've ever made. I'm going to show you guys how I personally do this. Remember, other people do this different ways, and there are some ways that are easier for some people, and there are some ways that are easier for other people. This is the way I do it. We are going to actually pattern ourselves so we're not going to use any pattern online especially with a bunny suit where it is extremely form-fitting we want it to match your exact body so let's go ahead and get started the first thing we're going to need to actually create the pattern is saran wrap duct tape shears and a sharpie let's go ahead and get started Alright guys, so what you're going to do is you're going to take the saran wrap, and I'm wearing a leotard just for video's sake, but this is a lot easier to do with just undergarments on because the saran wrap will stick a little bit better to your body. But what you're going to do is you're going to gently wrap the saran wrap over your body so it is strong enough that it will hold its place, but not so strong that it will rip or contract your body at all. If you do want to do any sort of body shape wear, I recommend that you put it on before you start doing this. That way you aren't using saran wrap and duct tape to bind your body. You're actually using binding um, material for that. In this case, I am not going to be using any binding material while I do this. I want this costume to be form-fitting, but not absolutely ridiculous. Now, I am going to go really high up on the chest, and I'm also going to do a little bit more coverage around the thighs and the behind, because it's easy to cut fabric and patterns off, but it is a little bit harder to add to them so might as well go ahead and pattern a little bit more than you think you need rather than a little bit less after you completely finish with the saran wrap and you've covered all the areas you need to cover next we're going to go in with the duct tape remember we are only patterning one side and we are going to transfer that side over to the other to make sure that the garment is symmetrical so when you are duct taping, focus on one side, but you should still get the base of the area completely covered. That way nothing slips around too much. So this is just me going by really fast with the duct tape. Remember, if you do have any of the saran wrap that slides, if you are doing this against your skin, it shouldn't slide around nearly as much as it does against my old pink leotard. Um, pink as in the store, I, I understand that it's black. <laughs> anyway, um, it shouldn't slide around too much, but if it does, go ahead, tape another piece of saran wrap on top of any places that became uncovered, and then go ahead and replace them. Also note that even though it looks like this duct tape is really tied up against my body, it's just some fat that's bubbling out. I've made a little bit too much money at my job recently, and instead of rewarding myself or saving it, I've bought a little bit too much double stuffed Oreos. Ah, worth it. <laughs>
All right, guys, when we like how much coverage we have, and we have, again, just one side that's completely done that we like, we are gonna take our Sharpie and we're gonna mark where we want the seams to be. I just missed a little spot that I'm fixing right there. Um, so you probably want your, to mark down the middle, you wanna mark your princess seam along your bust. You wanna mark the very side, so that's armpit to side. You wanna mark from the butt up your spine. And we want to make one more marking around your butt. Uh, this is not the marking that I went with in the end, but you can pretty much fine tune this after you cut yourself out of this because you really want to at this point. It's going to be hot. Trust me. You don't want to stay in this for too long. I stayed in it for only a few minutes. Remember, as you are cutting, you are only cutting where the seam will go. If you cut anywhere else, you will ruin your pattern. Okay, guys, now that we have our mold of our body, essentially, and we have put some lines in there about where we want the actual seams to go. So the next thing we're going to do is we are going to cut this in half and get rid of the side that we didn't care about. So for this one, it's this side's trash. So let's go ahead and do that. Next, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to mark what piece is what. That way I don't can get confused later. I'm also going to point an arrow upwards for every direction is up because sometimes it's very easy to accidentally flip a piece over and have it go the wrong way. And then you sew it together and you get really confused. So, for example, this is going to go like that. So this is the front center piece. And I'm going to be drawing an arrow up so I know that this piece, when I later transfer it and go to sew it, it's facing upwards. So, front center. Front side. And again, arrow pointing up. And then this, I don't, um, this part right here, I am going to have to decide how I want to draw the seams on this one. So I'm going to have to look at a reference picture online really fast. Okay. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just redoing some of these lines here to get it into a seam that I like. Now that I have all the lines on there, exactly where I want the seams to go, I'm going to cut this out. Before I do that, I did add a little bit more plastic later, which is causing this. So I'm just going to tape those together really fast. There we go. I have taped those two pieces together so this is a little bit more uniform. When I cut it out, there aren't going to be any loose pieces. So let's go ahead and cut this. We're going to cut right on the seams. So let me zoom in you here. So these are all my seams. These are the arrows that are pointing upwards. So I want to cut on every one of these seams and that's going to create the perfect pattern of what you want it to look like without any seam allowance. So let's go ahead and do that. And here's the front center piece and it's facing upwards just like this. So again, that's why it's really important to label because just looking this, can you really tell what this is supposed to be? That this is supposed to go right here? I mean, you can't really tell unless you label things and you label where it's facing because you could easily just say, oh, it could go right there. Label your pattern, especially if it's gonna take you a couple days to do this.
There is one other thing I like to do just to make sure I know where two pieces go together is I will put the two pieces together and I will make, I'll actually put them side by side next to each other and I'll make a shape coming out of them that connects right on where their seam should connect. That way it'll be very easy for me later to see exactly where they connect. See that? How that makes that shape when they're put together? That's just something I do. Right, guys so I wanted to show you I made one side of my back a little bit strange they didn't quite meet up this was because I didn't see and I missed that top of my back so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to put them together grab a little bit of duct tape here where's my roll where's my roll There's my roll. It was literally right in front of me. Take a little piece. Like this. And on the piece that I want to go ahead and make a little bit longer. Which is right in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to place this right on it and then leave a lot more space for it and pinch it on the back just like that and then trim it into place just like that so there's a little bit of gapage right there but I know about that so when I actually go to pattern it it'll be fine So now you can see when these two are flattened, they're a little bit closer. See that? A little bit closer in shape. All right guys, now that I have all my pieces and I know where they go and I am intelligent and labeling them and know how to reassemble them if I were to transfer them. We're going to transfer them to my favorite kind of material to actually transfer patterns onto, which is paper towels. So let's go ahead and do that. Alright guys, for the patterning part, you are going to need a pen, 
a uh, paper towel and a Mountain Dew is optional. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to grab each piece and lay it down as flat as possible just like this and we are going to mark out the seams and I like to mark out just the pattern. I don't do any of the um, seam allowance. I don't do any seam allowance on these patterns. Some people like to add seam allowance to patterns. Just if you are going to do that, at least mark where the seam allowance is. So you're just going to sketchy sketchy just like this. Okay, now that we have this in here, oh, hold on. So that's what we did, so I'm going to go ahead and label this front, center, and this is up, and this is the center. So this actually right here, I am not gonna have a seam there. That is going to be seamless for that front piece, but we'll get to that later. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of clean this pattern up just a little bit. So I want this to be a straight line in the front. That's not actually going to have a seam. One thing that this front piece, eh, I didn't really mark out too much is the crotch. So I'm just going to add a little bit of extra length to the crotch because we can always bring the crotch in, but it's hard to add to the crotch. This line looks pretty good for the front. This looks pretty good. Yeah, everything is looking awesome for this front center piece. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to just cut this out.
Alright guys, so this is what the pattern looks like all completely cut out. So just so we can visualize it a little bit, I've gone ahead and laid them out where you're going to sew them together when it's actually transferred to fabric. And you can see they're all facing upwards here and they're all lined up on the seams. So this one is the one that we are going to actually sew straight in the middle. So this is the straight side seam. This is the one that goes from the bottom of your armpit to the top of your uh, hip like the side of your hip though, right here. This is where your leg is, right here. This is where your booby is, right here. This is the seam that goes across your booty, down your waist, and to your leg, right here in the front. This is your crotch, right here. This is the front of your crotch. This is your back, right here. So this is, um, I, I feel like many, many, many people have this. I have it too. You know how you get your little like roll of back fat in the back? This is where that roll sits, like right there on the side. It's right here. And then this is the top, and then this is the top of the back, right there. So I'm going to go ahead and trim off the ex excess, ex 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 you know what a word I'm trying to say there, the excess off of this right here, and make sure this line is straight, and that'll be it. That is our perfect pattern that is cut for your specific body type and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to transfer this to fabric and sew the lining and then we're going to sew the satin front and do the boning too all right guys i'll i'll see you guys in the next video bye bye